Hey friends, it's Rana and yet again, I disappeared for two weeks, but this time I was more productive. I actually read 18 books in November. I think it is my best reading month ever, quantity-wise and quality-wise, and I'm really proud of it. And I'm here today to tell you about the 18 books that I've read in November, but I'm not gonna tell you about them in chronological order because it will make this video more messy. I'll divide this video into four parts, fiction books, non-fiction books, poetry collections and graphic novels. I gave five books, five stars this month, and I'm very picky with my five stars. And let's just start with fiction books. The first book that I've read this month is The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Kluwen. And I've decided to read this book because many people said that it is a feel-good book. And I needed that because if you saw my October wrap-up, I read only Stephen King books. And it put me in a really weird mood, so I wanted something to pick me up. And this book served more than I thought it would. This book is everything. I love it! I have so many things to say about this book, I don't know where to start. Let's just start with the synopsis. We follow this 40 years old man called Linus Baker, who lives a lonely, quiet life, and he only has his cat, Calippo, who is a queen. His life is a one boring routine. He only goes to his work, then back to his house, then again to his work, and so on and so forth, for 17 years. He works as a caseworker in the department in charge of magical youth. His job is basically to make sure that the special children in the government orphanages are being treated well and cared for and he's really good at his job. One day he is given a special assignment, a very secretive one, to go and visit an orphanage on an island and this orphanage is very different from all the ones that he visited during all his years of employment. The children on this island are very different and their caretaker is different too. I won't say anything else. Great book. I loved it. I love the writing style. The characters are all so precious and the plot is good too. Uh, it was a little bit predictable, but that didn't hinder my enjoyment of it. There's something very special in this book. Do you know that feeling that many people associate with reading the Harry Potter series? They say that it makes them feel like they are home. I felt that with this book. It gave me that warm, fuzzy feeling and it made me happy. TJ Klune is a brilliant writer. While reading this book, I felt many emotions. Sometimes I felt sad and angry and other times I caught myself audibly laughing. Such a great book. It is amazing, brilliant, show-stopping. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular. The next book that I read in November is Other Words for Home by Jasmine Warka. It is a middle grade book written in verse. We follow this young girl called Judy. She is Syrian and she lives in a coastal city in Syria. And I think the city is supposed to be the city of Ladiye because based on the description of her hometown in this book, I'm pretty sure it is the city of Ladiye. The book talks about her life back in Syria and how because of conflict and war in her country, she is forced to travel with her mother to Cincinnati, USA to stay for a little while with some relatives there and how she tries to adapt to her new life in the US and all the new challenges she faces there for being a young girl who is Muslim and Middle Eastern. I give this book 4 out of 5 stars. It is a great book with a great representation. The next book is a um, thriller mystery book where a couple, rich couple, invite people, friends and family to their wedding on an island off the coast of Ireland. The book is from multiple points of view and from the start we go back and forth between after the wedding where we get to know that something bad happened, i.e. a uh, body was discovered and we go back to before the wedding, I think three days before the wedding where we get introduced to the characters and we don't know who got killed and who is the killer. There are many unlikable characters in this book, especially that group of jerks who went to a high school for the rich and who looked down on everybody, even themselves. 
I gave it three out of five stars and frankly the only reason that I picked it up is because I heard many people comparing it to Agatha Christie's novels and there is nothing similar to Agatha Christie's novels except that it is based on an island like the, her book Then There Were None and there are multiple characters and that's it. Nothing in it stood out to me as different or shocking. An impressive twist that did nothing for me and I heavily rely my rating of thriller mysteries on the reveals and the twists. And a little tip from me to you when you are reading a thriller mystery crime novel and someone in the past was bullied slash killed there's 99.99% .99 chance that someone will come back and avenge his death whether it is a family member a lover or a friend so when it happens don't be shocked the next book is the empress of salt and fortune by Nivu, a great novella very short very quick to read I really find it hard to talk about smaller books because I don't know what to say about it without spoiling it. The Empress of Salt and Fortune is, I think, Chinese-inspired historical fantasy and there is some LGBTQ representation. I really like this novella. I give it 4 out of 5 stars. The writing style is very gorgeous and poetic without being pretentious. Go and read the synopsis on Goodreads. If it sounded interesting to you, go and listen to the audiobook. The audiobook is really great. It was like two hours. It is very short and I don't listen to audiobooks on regular speed. I listen to 1.5 or double the speed so you will finish it pretty fast. It is a great book with amazing characters and I can't wait for the second book that is coming out soon. The audiobook is available on script and I always always leave a link in my description box for you if you are interested. It gives you two months free on script. The next book that I read in November is The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse by Charlie McCasey. And Confession Time, I wasn't expecting to love this book as much as I did. It was the last book that I've read in November and I gave it 5 out of 5 well-deserved stars. This book, it is about a boy who is traveling and he meets uh, and have conversations with the mole, a fox and a horse in that order. I read it at 4 a.m. in the morning alone in my bed in the darkness and it made me feel some emotions that i wasn't ready to feel it is very short and i read it in less than 30 minutes and i read it two times back to back because it was very emotional to me it is not only just a children picture book because the author himself said that you can be 8 or 80 and read and enjoy this book. It is truly a work of art and now I really want a physical copy of it so I can read it whenever I am feeling down. Now for the nonfiction books, I had four books on my TBR for nonfiction November but I've only managed to read three books because the fourth one I wasn't in the mood for it and I'm a mood reader. And mood readers put TBRs just to break them. The first non-fiction book that I finished in November is A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. I really don't know what I was expecting when I decided to read this book because I hate physics and it mainly talks about physics. I know I hate physics but I was really curious to see what all the hype is about. And to be frank with you, most of what I read just went over my head because I didn't understand it. And this book is supposed to be for people who are not specialized in physics. So yeah, I gave it 3 out of 5 stars and I would recommend it for people who enjoy and understand physics, not for people like me. The next book that I finished for Nonfiction November is Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. It is, as the title say, it is about uh, the new science of sleep and dreams. The main reason why I read this book is because I've always struggled with my sleep in some way. When I was a child, I always talked and walked in my sleep. The walking part stopped when I grew up, but I still talk in my sleep. And I always had the worst sleeping schedule. 
Granted that my mother forced us to sleep early when we were young, but when I grew up, I always had a really bad sleeping schedule because I am a night owl and I hate sleeping early. When I was in my last year in high school, I barely slept from anxiety because the last year in high school in Jordan is really important. And when I went to university, it, my sleeping got better, but it was still bad. My sleep really got better when I graduated uni. I think the anxiety was playing a big role in my bad sleeping habits. And here's the thing, for many years, I believe that I don't need 8 hours of sleep every day. I thought it was a waste of time and I can sleep when I die. I know, stupid. This book taught me many, many things that I needed to know. But the most important thing is that lack of sleep caused you to have a really bad physical and mental health and it shortened your lifespan and many other terrible things. Of course, all of this were based on experiments that he conducted or other colleagues of his conducted and it was explained in details in this book. Basically, this book slapped me, called me a dumb bitch, and opened my eyes to many things that I was ignorant about and I was really thankful for it. It was the wake up call for me. After I finished reading this book, I started forcing myself to sleep longer hours and to have more quality sleep. But I still have a really bad sleeping schedule. I'm trying to fix it though. If it wasn't clear until now, I love this book and I gave it 5 out of 5 stars and I highly recommend it to everyone. And the third and last book that I've read for non-fiction November is Educated. It is a memoir by Tara Stover. Tara Stover is from Idaho. She is the seventh child in an extremist Mormon family who believe in many wild things like Y2K and that the government is conspiring against them. They also don't believe in school education or in modern medicine or hospitals. Her father has paranoia and she later started believing that he may be bipolar and I believe that he may have other undiagnosed mental illnesses. She also has an abusive older brother who is a piece of sh this book is about her journey and fight for education and better life, among other important things. I was riding a roller coaster of emotions while reading this book, but the main emotion that I was feeling is anger. I'll make a separate review video for this book because apparently I have many things that I need to talk about. I need a place to discuss them or I'll f explode. I think the discussion video will be up in mid-January because I have other videos planned until then. Anyway, I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars and I will keep thinking about Tara's story for many years in the future. I just hope that she is in a better place now and she is happier now away from her toxic family. She really went through a lot and I wish her all the best. Now for the comics and the graphic novels part, firstly I read The Umbrella Academy Volume 1, The Apocalypse Suit. Now please tell me, that I'm not the only person out there who didn't know that this dude from My Chemical Romance is the one who wrote The Umbrella Academy. Because the moment I found out that I was so shocked. Anyway, as you may know, I really love The Umbrella Academy TV series as you may have seen in my tier ranking video of their characters. So I decided to read all the comics that the TV series was based on. I found the first volume to be okay, it was very rushed and everything was happening so fast. The characters were very bland and unlikable and don't get me to talk about the art style, it was horrible. It was expected for the TV show to be different than the comics, but it was very, very different from it. I'm actually very impressed how they took the comics and made something so amazing like the TV series. You can see how hard they worked on it, but I have to say it, the TV series is far, far better than the comics, but I still appreciate them for what they are and I give the first volume 3 out of 5 stars. 
As for the second volume, Dallas, I really enjoyed it more than the first one and I give it 4 out of 5 stars. The plot in volume 2 was moving more smoothly but still very rushed and the characters are still very unlikable. If anything, I hate number 1 even more than before. But overall, volume 2 is my favorite out of the three. As for Hotel Oblivion, the third and last volume of the Umbrella Academy comic series, it was published 2019, 10 whole years after volume 1. And it was my least favorite, I gave it 2 out of 5 stars. It was chaotic and all over the place, I didn't understand half of what was happening and didn't enjoy the rest. It was just a hot mess and I'm pretty sure that there will be more volumes coming out in the future for this comic series. but. I won't continue it. I'll just stick with the TV series. Thank you. Next. And the graphic novel that I read in November is Sheets by Brenna Tumblr. It is a middle grade graphic novel about this girl called Marjorie. She is 13 years old and she is running her late mother laundry shop. She is also living with her depressed father and little brother. And one day a ghost of a little boy visits her in her laundry shop. Very cute story and I love the art style and the color scheme of pastel pink. I give it 4 out of 5 stars, I really enjoyed it. And by the way, I really hated the bad guy in this graphic novel. He was so annoying and he frustrated me a lot. I really hated him and I've never hated anyone this much in a graphic novel. Now for the poetry section and before I tell you about the poetry books that I've read in November, I'm gonna explain my rating system for poetry books. I only give five stars to poetry books that I really love and consider perfection and would reread many times in the future. I give four stars for a poetry book if I really like it and if it has many good poems in it. Three stars if it is average with some good poems. I give two stars when the book doesn't have any impact whatsoever and I don't mark any poems. And one stars if I hate it. The first poetry book is If My Body Could Speak by Black Bird. This was alright. I think, as I said in my Goodreads review, I think Black is a really good performer of her poems. If you saw one of her videos where she is performing on stage, you will agree with me. She is amazing on stage, but reading her poems on paper felt a little bit weak for me. Most of her poems are about rape culture and eating disorders, so be aware of that before picking it up. I give this book 2 out of 5 stars, and if you want my advice, I would recommend you to just watch her performance videos because they are way better. Next is Sink by Desiree Something. In this one, the poet mainly talks about family, relationship, and feminism. Desiree is also a great performer on stage and she performs her poems with so much emotions. I really enjoyed some of her poems in this book and I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. The next one is Don't Call Us Dead by Dennis Smith. This one, it talks about uh, race, social justice, and being queer. When I started reading this book, I genuinely thought that I finally found a good poetry book this month, but this lasted only for the third, first third or so of this book. The poems in the first third of the book were really good and they had a good impact, but the remaining two thirds of the book were a let down. I didn't enjoy the rest of the book as much, so overall I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. The next one is Odes to Lithium. I had the highest expectations for this one because it mainly talks about mental health and mental illnesses, but I didn't enjoy it that much in the end. It was not bad, but it was not the style of poetry that I usually enjoy, and I didn't even mark one poem in the whole book. And that's a sign for me to give it two stars. Next one is Poems for the End of the World by Katie Wismar. I started reading it as an ebook on script and I was really enjoying it. Then she, there's some poems in this book that she talks about being a YouTuber. Uh, so I was feeling that her name is fami familiar for me. So I looked it up and she is a booktuber. 
and it was really nice surprise for me it's about heartbreak self-discovery and other things and it is divided into four parts waking up growing pings crushing realities and disappointing beginnings my favorites for sure are growing pains and crushing realities a really good poetry book i enjoyed it and gave it four out of five stars the next book i really didn't know where to put it in non-fiction or in poetry in the end i put it in the poetry section of my video it is on the horizon by lois lowry it is a book beautifully written in verse alongside gorgeous drawings the book is about the author Lois Lowry looking back at her childhood in Hawaii and in Japan and some historical research surrounding two main events that changed history the attack on Pearl Harbor and the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki I fell in love with this book and found it very fascinating despite the heavy subject behind it and I think the main reason that it was written for younger readers but that didn't stop me from really enjoying it and I think it is a good read for all ages it's a new favorite for me I really loved it and gave it 5 out of 5 stars so that's it for today's video I hope you liked it please subscribe to see my future videos and I will see you next time bye